Hello everyone and welcome to a very, very unique webinar. Unique because the keynote speaker for today's webinar, it's not going to be me, but it will be Robert Pardo, who will be interviewed by my colleague Cornell. And Robert Pardo is, without exaggeration, a true legend. He was at the birth of automated trading globally some 40 years ago. So he has an incredible amount of experience and has developed dozens of strategies. He has revolutionized the approach to algo trading worldwide. He came up with a lot of methods for analyzing and testing robustness that we use to this day and that we work with ourselves in that advanced course. And I can say with absolute confidence that it's definitely worth your time to watch this interview with such a legend. And when we look at Robert's experiences, as I mentioned, he was at the birth of automated trading in the 1980s, which is a very long time indeed. He's had very superior results of the long term, so he's really thrived over those few decades. And Robert Pardo is a great example of how automated strategies really work over the long term. He's also the author of the Walk Forward Analysis Method. That's the method we use to test robustness, but we don't use it in Strategy Lab. We use it in more advanced curves because it has its undeniable advantages. Robert is the author of legendary books about automated trading and in this his talk today he's going to focus on robustness testing, the sustainability of automated strategies and he is also going to talk about recommendations for beginning traders that I hope and I think I really do believe a lot of you will find useful. And additionally Robert is one of our clients. We are preparing a special version of Strategy Quant for him to better fit his style of strategy development. And even within his talk, he mentions that Strategy Quant is a great piece of work. And we are honestly very happy that an icon like Robert has given a positive response to our software that we've been working on for over a decade. I mean, it's really great. I mean, what you want more. Besides that, the world universities are using our software. Such a nice words from such a legend as Robert Pardo. It's really something very nice. But now let's get right into it. So take your time, make yourself comfortable and enjoy the interview with Robert Pardo. Hi, I'm Bob Pardo and I'm speaking to you from the Chicago suburbs in the United States. Um, I'd like to thank the folks at Strategy Quantax for the opportunity to, to talk with you folks today. Um, and I, you know, as you, as some of you may know, I am, I'm a, considered to be an expert in strategy development. Um, and I'm going to give you some of the, the main guidelines that I use in building strategies and give you some ideas of why they're important. Um, but before we do that, I'd, I'd like to give you a little bit of my background so you understand that I'm not, that I actually, I do know what I'm talking about, and in fact, I really have. I walk the walk. I don't just. I don't just talk about this. So again, uh, this is. I'm really talking about the importance of robustness and strategy development. And uh, you know, I I started out doing this in the in the early '80s um, uh, as a as a software developer. Um, I was one of the very first pe people to actually build trading strategies that actually worked. With a, a microcomputer for the for the individual investor, um, that evolved into me doing consulting for um, a lot of li large trading firms. Um, along the way, I wrote a book. The original one was called "The Design and Testing of and Testing of, Op of Trading Strategies." Um, I updated it in 2008, um, and also I am the I am the creator of Walk Forward Analysis, uh, and we use Walk Forward Analysis to actually develop. All the strategies we've ever ever used, and we use walk forward analysis to actually develop the strategies we're using now in our new program. So, anyway, I started with the Pardo Corporation in 1980, um, and we built a lot of different uh, trading programs. Uh, one of the most famous ones 
probably not known now, but one of the first programs to actually let let people to actually build and trade trading strategies was a program called Swing Trader. Um, we created something called the Chartist, the Advanced Chartist and the Advanced Trader, which was um, very much like um, uh, it was a, a Windows orient. It, it had a window menuing, but before Windows existed, uh, and it was a, a program that allowed people to actually do sophisticated graphic analysis uh, as well as develop and test trading strategies um, in a fashion uh, very, very similar to what TradeStation is now. Um, we also had another family of products called Blast, um, and there were, there were about a dozen applications in there which were non-graphical but highly powerful, highly automatable um, strategy testing and development environments. Um, and in, in those, we actually had, um, we, we built, we did all, we built walk forward analysis into all of them. Um, and actually we still, we did a walk forward analysis in a way that was more sophisticated than actually anybody um, is even doing it now, but that's another story. In any case, and, and some of those strategies actually, you know, we wound up creating an application called XT, which was actually, uh, it was again, it was a, a strategy development platform plus a whole portfolio of strategies, which we leased in those days for, for $25,000. Um, and we, in the, in the process of doing, um, in, in the process of doing all this, we, I was approached by Goldman Sachs uh, to create a customized version of Advanced Trader. That project lasted for quite some time, and we actually built them a, 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 a real-time version of Advanced Trader, which actually ran in, in OS2, which um, it came and went very quickly, but it was a very good operating system. Um, and after that project ended, um, I did a, a joint venture with Daiwa Securities of America, um, I had a client, my, the, the person who headed their U.S. operation was a, a customer of mine on the software side, um, and I approached him about building um, a multi-strategy money management program. Um, and that project ended, they, gave, they actually gave me the rights to the, all of the strategies that we developed. Um, and one of those strategies actually became XT99 Diversified, which was a program we ran with Dunn Capital Management. Um, they were a they were a pioneer um, in algorithmic trading back in the they started back in the late 80s, um, and I started working with them in 98. Um, and we ran XT99 Diversified for about 12 years, and it produced real time returns of about 19% a year annualized rate of return, with our best year actually being 142% um, in 2008. Uh, interesting to note, by the way, that is one one other. I mean, certainly, you know, I as the creator of walk forward analysis, um, of course, I'm a big advocate of it as well. But it's interesting to note that the strategy that what became XT99 diversified and that ran for 12 years uh, with with Don actually was built in 1993 with walk forward analysis, um, and the only thing that was ever changed about it was the way in which we did the walk forward analysis going forward. Um, I originally built what became XT99 to be a faster program. Uh, Dunn wanted it to be a slower program because they they trade big, they trade very big, they trade very big size. Um, and especially in those days before the electronic order entry, um, it was it was more difficult to trade fast. Um, what would not would not would be considered fast now, but fast in those days, which was every day or every every couple of days. Um, it was hard to do it with a lot of money. So we, they slowed it down a little bit. And uh, so, but then we, and we actually ran a slower walk forward as opposed to the fast one that I originally developed it with, but nothing else ever changed. Um, we never modified the strategy uh, from, from 1999 to 2012 when we stopped running it, other than to do up, update the parameters. Um, XT99 also, was cited over 35 times for, for top trading performance in various categories, largely by Barclay Hedge. I was also fortunate enough to actually um, be featured as one of the top traders in 2008 in Futures Magazine. 
this is the newest version of my, this is the latest version of my book. The first one was written in 1991. And back in those days, it was actually, it was referred to um, as the Black Bible. Uh, not to sound her heretical, but that's, that's what a lot of people, that's what a lot of people called it. Um, and that, in that book, I, I, I really mapped out what is now considered to be common practice and optimization. Um, although a, a lot of people still don't actually do it to the same degree of thoroughness that I that I mapped out in that in my book. Um, and even though I had published an article about walk forward analysis prior to this, um, I really ex ex explained walk forward analysis in, in the most detailed presentation that's yet been published um, in that book. And then I did it again. I didn't really change it very much for 2007 because it didn't really need any change, at least in my opinion. So, you know, the thing is, you know, I developed, you know, walk forward analysis really um, is a, a sophisticated application of out of sample testing, as you, some of you may know. Um, you know, it's now considered the gold standard for optimization. And even though some people in machine learning talk, they prefer what they call, they, they prefer another method. Um, it really is, if it's done properly, it's, it's as thorough as cross validation. And, and in many cases, probably more thorough. But I actually developed it uh, out of kind of out of, out of pragma pragmatic necessity. Um, I had really found that we were building the strategies with our software in those days. You know, I don't know how much how, how far back in many of you know about uh, computer uh, microcomputers and so forth. But in those days, if you had a one megabyte of, of memory, you had a lot. Um, and as you might imagine, it was very difficult to, to get to load a lot of data. So one of the things we yeah, we we had one of the way, one of the ways we compensated for not being able to load ten years, which you couldn't do in those days, um, at least not in any way that's rapid. Um, and uh, we 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 actually found that by by looking at a smaller window and periodically reoptimizing it, we were able to actually do very nicely. So we essentially realized, well, you know, we're doing, we were originally kind of doing it a little bit by hand as some of my customers were. Um, and we realized, well, that's, that's something that the computer can be taught to do. So we did. Um, and we've never, I've never looked back because I've, you know, at this point in time, I'll, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit in the story. But at this point in time, you know, I have, I've looked at, I've probably been, I've, I've probably run at this point in time, literally, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of different optimizations with our computers. Um, and I've never had any reason to not use walk forward analysis. Um, I've had a lot of reasons not to use just simply a straight optimization because it's, it's, it's very unreliable. But walk forward analysis um, has proven itself again and again to produce strategies that perform in real time like they perform in testing. So let's see. So anyway, the, the, what's, that's that's the, that's a, a, a quick thumbnail sketch of my background. Um, you know, I started doing this business back in 2015. I released a program called Ranger um, in 2018. Um, I released we released Ranger Alpha, which are strategies that run on 60 minute E mini, uh, the E mini, um, and have produced over three almost close to 300 percent returns since their release um and that's actually on relatively conservative leverage um and uh, we're also I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to say we're going to be releasing um a ranger version for S sqx uh sometime in july or august of this year so i mean one of the reasons why i wanted to kind of show you the diversity of my background, you know, software development and consulting to top trading firms um, and trader is I want you to realize that coming up with something like walk forward analysis um, and develop and developing the confidence that I have in it um, is based upon years of experience and upon the fact that, you know, when you're a money manager, you, you, only, <laughs> you only get paid if you perform. Um, so, you know, we built XT99 Diversified, as I mentioned, with it. Um, and was maintained with walk forward analysis throughout its life. Um, Ranger Alpha was created and is maintained with walk forward analysis. We built a program uh, called Pardo Renaissance Diversified, 
which was a highly strategy diversified platform. Uh, that too was built entirely with walk forward analysis and maintained accordingly. And that's that performed extremely well as that performed extremely well also. So essentially, this the point of all this is that this is actually um, this is this is this is really kind of like this is the proof of my of of, of these different laws that I believe are crucial to building robust trading strategies. Now, this is something that I think a lot of people would be surprised to hear, but let's start out what I'm why what I'm what I'm going to say about this, and then why I say it, and that is. That a strategy that is not proven to be robust is worthless, no matter how great the optimization looks. Um, this really could, they, we can, we could go into a lot of detail about this, but the bottom line here is that um, I, having, as I said, I've been involved with hundreds of thousands of optimizations and walk forward analyses, um, and I even occasionally, when I'm building a new strategy, will I just I don't put it through walk forward analysis until I know. That it actually has some some merit, um, but you know, I, having seen many 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 of these things, uh, I can tell you that you can the only optimization that you really can count on um, is a comprehensive optimization that actually has nothing but winners. If you have a strategy that looks like that when you optimize it, then you don't need to really do anything else. Um, however, even if we routinely when develop we were developing stuff with Ranger. We routinely have optimizations um, that have well more than, you know, half, if not two thirds, of the results being, um, you know, being being worthwhile in optimization. But I still insist on putting it through. Um, I still insist on putting it through the full, the full range of our of our of our robust testing, because without that, I don't. Ha I just don't. Ha I just don't have any confidence in it without having done that. You know, you could really, because I mean, I know I, I've talked to other people involved with just doing the optimization work for developing strategies. Um, and, you know, I mean, I can, I, I was told by a guy who actually was a, um, uh, he was an asset allocator. Um, and he, when I explained to him my process, he said, you know, most people don't even do, you know, one one hundredth of what it is you do. They just run an optimization. Uh, they, if, they, if some of the results of the optimization look good, they think they've got something, um, and they go with it. And then they're surprised when it fails. So, I mean, I, I can, I can honestly say that if you really don't have, if you haven't done, no matter how good the optimization looks, if you really haven't done robust testing, it can be nothing more than a, a, a very de destructive and dangerous fantasy. And it's dangerous because if you're going to put money on it, you're very likely you, you, the chances of losing money are very high, but if, if, you, if it's not robust, you will lose money. Um, if you, uh, so that's, so robustness, um, you say, what's robustness? I mean, robustness in, in this context is a little different than what people think of a, a robust health, for example, although it's analogous to it. But in other words, robustness really is a term we use to decide whether or not a strategy will produce real-time trading results that are in line with its with its testing profile. One of the things we have found with walk forward analysis is if you do it correctly, um, your real-time results will very closely model your in your your test results. So this leads me to my my second law. A strategy that has been proven statistically robust, will produce real-time trading results that are very much in line with its historical test profile. In other words, what you see is what you're going to get. Um, and, you know, this is, I mean, I know a lot of people think that when you do an optimization, this is what's going to happen. You're going to, you're going to do an optimization and it's going to be, uh, it's going to give you results just like what you've done in, in testing. Um, there's a lot of ways you can fool yourself with, ro with, with optimization one of the worst of which is optimizing lots and lots and lots of parameters in a strategy. Um, and I don't know how many of you people have ever done any work with actual statistical modeling, but I learned the hard way years ago when I was first doing 4 e analysis to, to do for cycle forecasting. When I first started fitting curves with 4 uh, e analysis to, to these markets, 
um, the the curve matching was, was was ideal. I thought I thought to myself, wow, this is amazing. We're gonna this is gonna be great. But what it really boils down to is if you if you if you don't do it right, all you're really doing is curve fitting, which um, is not the same thing as actually doing optimization or robustness testing. So this is the third law, and this is this is this is aside from the fact that you know you're actually going to have something you can have confidence that will actually perform in real time. A robust trading strategy will produce a highly accurate performance profile, which can be used to reliably quantify risk and reward. The value of this, of course, is that this is this performance profile can be reliably used to efficiently allocate capital. You know, without having without knowing your your true without knowing your true risk, you really can't you really can't properly capitalize a trading account with at least with knowledge. You can do it based on guesswork. You can do it based on the optimization results and so forth. But um, you know, when you know your risk, you can quantify correctly. When you know your reward, you can compare it intelligently to other other markets and to other strategies and see whether or not it really is worth putting any money on. So then, yeah, I, I you know, don't don't misunderstand me. I'm not dissing optimization. Um, optimization is the first step in a strategy validation. When we're first, when we're doing our process, one of the first thing we do, of course, is run an optimization to see whether or not anything anything we've gotten there is it was worth worth looking at any further. Um, so this this is, gives you some idea whether or not you actually have um, some positive expectancy. Uh, it also tells us whether or not the performance is en is big enough to either look further because I mean when we run through our process, some sometimes we see results. We you know I, I have an intuitive idea of what I expect from different markets, um, and you know if it's just if it's be way below that threshold, even though it maybe it's it's gonna it's 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 profitable, uh, it's probably it's not really it's not it's not good enough. And also, one of the things it will also tell you is it'll tell you it'll give you a first look at the quality of the, it'll give you a first look or a crude look or an estimate as to the quality of robustness in a strategy. I mean, if you're looking at a thousand combinations in an optimization and ten of them are profitable, even if they're highly profitable, you know you 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 really have a fantasy. If you're looking at the same the same number of optimizations. And you've got you know five or six hundred of them that are that are profitable and nicely so. The likelihood is fairly good that it will actually be robust. However, I can tell you that alone is not a, that that's that's not a sufficient guarantee. So anyway, then what's wrong with optimization? Well, like I said, nothing if it's understood and used correctly. Everything is wrong with optimization if you believe it's the final word in strategy development. And everything is wrong with it if you believe that it will tell you whether or not a strategy is, is robust. Like I said earlier, I've looked at thousands and thousands of optimizations, um, and I do not, I still have no reason to trust the results of an optimization by itself without any further testing. So the, essentially, that's why I created walk forward analysis. We were having this experience way, way back when of doing optimization and having things not go very well going forward. So um, we actually created, we did we, we did what a lot of people did, did in real life, which is to walk it forward. Uh, and one of the important things, that, one of the most important things to rec recognize about walk forward analysis is that if you look, if you're looking at a walk forward analysis over a 10 year time period, it's important to understand that if it's a walk forward analysis, you're only seeing out of sample trading results. You're not seeing any in sample trading results. Um, and one of the things we've also found is, you know, one reason why just some people just walk forward testing because they think a walk forward test is simply one optimization and one out of sample test. Well, that is we can well, that that is one walk forward. And I can tell you from, from based on experience that one walk forward can be as big a fluke um, as is as, as an optimization. That's why it's important to do um, uh, as many walk forwards as possible in your data. Um, and one of the things, one of the things we have done as time has gone on, is we've we've gone down to faster time frames. 
um, into the longer walk forward analyses where we don't just have three or four or five or maybe even yeah, I, I personally feel if you have less than fewer than 10 walk forward forwards in a walk forward analysis, um, it's it can be suspicious. You can you it, it's possible, but it's way better to have a walk forward analysis that has 20 or 30 or even more walk forwards in it. So um, the solution really, I mean, I, I would tell anybody who wants to get involved with trading algorithmically that you you have to do a walk forward analysis or some kind of equivalent robustness testing. And I don't personally don't know if one is good as good as if not better than walk forward analysis. But in any case, the some of the solutions are, um, you know, you can use Ranger. We use walk forward analysis to create strategies with it. Ranger Maker, which is a which is an add-on for Ranger, um, actually automates much of the testing process. Walk forward analysis can be done very nicely um, and uh, and very rapidly in SQ Strategy Quantex. Um, Ranger uh, SQX is going to use walk forward analysis to create strategies, um, and there's also going to be a Ranger a version of Ranger SQX that will completely automate the strategy creation and validation with using a walk forward analysis so that it, it, it'll be done entirely from start to finish. Um, you simply start it um, and when you're done, you'll have a batch of strategies that'll, that'll have been validated with walk forward analysis. Okay, so if, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, um, this is how you this is how you do it. Best way to do it is, is to send me an email. Um, I usually get pretty proud about answering them, but um, I am often really emails best. Let's put it that way. Okay, so there were some questions. Um, so number one, the optimization profile. Yes, I, I did. I did create that back, and I, I created that back in or actually our first software and, and talked about it in my in my in my book. Um, it really is nothing more than a least a, just a profile of the statistics that are key to performance. Uh, the idea is to actually fi figure out whether or not you um, when you've actually had a problem with it, if you're having a drawdown, are you actually are you within performance the performance profile or not? So we look at things like the, you know the number of the number of losing trades, the number of winning trades, you know the average runs, average trade size, um, average average drawdown. Is, is we keep in mind the max drawdown, but what's more important um, is the average drawdown and what's and also the duration, the average the average duration of the drawdown. Um, so. It's basically just you want to. What you want to know is that in real life you're performing in line with your profile. Um, and one thing that's kind of important to note that there's a, a little dynamic component to this, partially because if you're trading a strategy, and certainly we've seen this in markets like Bitcoin and markets like, and certainly the stock market, which has just been in a never-ending bull market. Um, you you basically as as a market as a market goes up in value, the volatility changes. So if you're, if let's say you your your volatility actually doubled um, in in a year um, from what it was in your test profile, uh, you kind of expect. Experience has shown that uh, you generally expect that if volatility doubles, your risk and your reward may well double. Uh, so if your average drawdown say was ten thousand dollars. And that was based on volatility A, um, and then we're at volatility B, which is twice volatility A. It might not be a real surprise um, if your if your drawdowns go up to like fifteen or twenty thousand um, dollars. But in if in also in the in line with that, it's important to note that uh, if your drawdown is going to go up, your performance also had better go up. If it if it, if it doesn't. If let's let's say for example, this is a, how the profile would actually help you. Um, if your drawdown went, if your drawdown volatility doubled, your drawdown went to doubled, but your performance halved. That's telling you something's wrong. 
Um, are there any other techniques besides walk forward analysis that can be used to test the strategy of robustness? Well, I know that some people use other methods. The most, the one that I have the, the greatest amount of respect for here with, at this point in time would be cross validation, which is a, very similar to doing a number of walk forwards. Um, but I don't, I'm not aware of any, and, and I'm not, I, I mean, I'm, I personally am very confident um, in walk forward analysis. So I'm kind of of the school that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, how long does a profitable strategy usually last? Well, I think I, I pointed out earlier in the presentation that, you know, that the strategy we ran um, in XT99 was actually built in 1993. Uh, we started trading it in a version of it in 1999, um, never changed. We never changed the strategy at all in all that time. We only changed the parameters, um, and uh, we would would do a little mixing of the um, a little mixing of the of the of the basket. But that's a difference. That's a different story. Um, and in fact, these same strategies are still working very nicely now. So, um, you know, in general. You know, I mean, so that how long is that? Is that like that's almost that's more than it's about 20, 27, 28 years. So I personally okay, think I have, that a profitable I have strategy. Additional question to this one. I'm sorry. Yeah, if uh, may I have additional question to this one? Sure. Sure. Yeah, because many people say like uh, that, uh, like markets uh, are changing and they are like new, like Bitcoin and other assets that uh, like life period of strategies are shorter and you need to adapt them more often. Do you see it uh, from your point of view, from experience or rather rather you simply once you develop a very robust strategy, then it can last for years? I, I think ultimately, um, I you know, yes, markets do change, volatility changes, trends change. The simple truth is one of the one of the other great benefits of walk forward analysis and one of the things that we didn't talk about um, is that walk forward analysis and probably one of its best benefits it, it's it's adaptive so um, your your parameters will change in response to changes in 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 regime um, in, in response to changes in trend in response to changes in volatility um, that's one of the great big advantages of it um, so I I mean, we have, you know, we, we we have part of the thing is, you know, I've always been I've been an advocate of having multiple strategies, um, and we have we are fortunate to have. Well, we're fortunate to have hundreds of strategies that are profitable. Um, so one of the things that's 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 a that, that's a great effort. That's one of the reasons why I'm a big advocate of something like Ranger and SQX, um, is that I think it's a wise idea. Uh, to have as many pot strategies as you possibly can have, because even if a strategy um, is profitable, it does it's going to have it, it can have a drawdown when some other mark when other some other strategy is doing extremely well. So um, this is not it's there's not there's not a really I don't think you really can say there's a hard and fast rule about this, but I think if somebody tells you that a strategy is going to last you for two or three years, then you got then you have to throw it away. I think. The, you really haven't built a very good strategy. That would be that would be that would be my take on the whole thing. Um, Thank, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it was perfect. Thank you. Sure. Well, this is the, how often you recommend reoptimizations of the strategy parameters. Well, that's about as easy as that's about as easy as it, as it can possibly be. Um, that's dictated by the walk forward analysis. So we all of our stuff. Has a calendar um, when you have to reoptimize it, um, and you just simply go by the by the, the by the by the the walk forward analysis you've chosen. Um, there, I mean, I don't think you can. Say, I mean, I, I I know in truth with XT99 because Dunn thought it was an interesting idea. We would do the reoptimizations once a year, so we we actually wound up doing essentially a ten by one. Walk a, a ten year by one year opt walk forward analysis, um, and so I, I think I, I don't think. I mean, I, I know I know that in fact people have done they they have the bad habit of when something when something 
when they when they get into a drawdown, they don't like the, they don't like having the drawdown because who does? Um, but the simple truth is they're going to have the, the best will have drawdowns. The question is, you know, how how deep, how long, um, and uh, is it is it in line? Um, so, but you just some people just kind of say, okay, well, I'm having a drawdown. It, it doesn't work anymore. Let's just throw it away. And then guess what? It starts to perform nicely again. Um, or they just kind of arbitrarily redo an out re-optimization when um, they don't like the way it's performing. I, I, we were very religious about this. We do just what the walk forward analysis dictates. So if it's a if it's a six month by two month re, um, window, that's what we do. Every two months, we do it. Now one of the things that we don't do is I I learned a long time ago. You really don't want to walk forward analysis to work on calendars. So for example, you don't you don't you don't want all your strategies and all your markets to to be um, running, let, let's say, for example, a 12 month by three month happening on the same day in the same month. Um, so uh, there's a you you wind up you wind up building into it the calendar bias because um, there are there are cycles that the, and there are there are calendar cycles. So I like to have optimization. We like to have our walk forwards. A lot of them start like they'll, they'll, the, the next window will start like, you know, June 23rd. Um, and we have to re-optimize it. And then the next optimization is going to be sometime in, you know, August 7th or something like that. Um, I think it's very good not to have it on the calendar. Uh, I think you have to really be strict about it um, and just do your re-optimization based on the walk forward analysis. Uh, if you don't do a walk forward analysis, then I can't tell you. I can't help you here. Well, what is the main sign that a strategy has stopped working and not just going through a regular drawdown? Well, this is actually, um, you know, again, this is this is this is actually like we talked about with the optimization profile um, and looking at the looking at the average drawdown. Um, the only thing you really can do um, is trust the numbers. So if you're basically in line with the the key metrics, average trade, and by the way, not just a, a fixed number, but the average trade plus or minus like one standard deviation, the, the average drawdown plus or minus one standard deviation, same thing with the runs and so forth. Um, if you're having, like I said before, um, if you're having, a, let's say we, we go back to our example where the volatility has doubled um, and we have a drawdown that's in proportion to the vol volatility increase based on, on our stat profile. But the the performance um, has actually really shrunk. You have to look for anything and any you have to look for any kind of any kind of sign that a strategy is basically misbehaving um, and the, and the key performance metrics. And that's that's how you that's that's really the only way that you can do it. Um, but you know one of the things that people I think don't really understand about this whole thing um, is that. You know, ultimately, if you're if a market, any strategy is going to be the, is going to be basically beholden to the market. You know, like they say, a rising tide all boats all boats all boats float in a rising tide. Um, you know, every you know in the stock market, most of the, if a stock's not going up when the market's going up on on the, on the whole, obviously there's a problem with that stock. In the same kind of way. Um, it's important to really understand that um, if your market is really moving very, if it's moving very directionally, and you have a strategy would actually would that would that would benefit from a, a, a trend movement that's not performing, then there's something there's likely something wrong with the strategy. Now it, it could have basically uh, it it could be have be having a problem, um, but you have to kind of look at whether or not. The, it's, is the market is the, are you doing badly because of the market or because of the strategy? Um, and as I say, if the market's really moving dramatically in one direction and you're not making money, then there's probably something wrong. Yeah. So basically, even if you have uh, like big number of strategies in your, in your portfolio, you still know in which market regime the strategy works best. I would say. Still know if the strategy, if it's trend following or mean reversion or other, and uh, you are looking if uh, 
it's in sync with the as market is behaving. So, so beside the statistic, you also watch um, like the market behaving and uh, what if strategy works. Yes, you have to. You have to. You know, one of the things in, in our mix, we have kind of found that having, you know, if you have five strategies in a market, um, we prefer to have three that are mean reverting or counter trend and two that are with trend. Um, there are exceptions to that. When you have a very, very strong trend, uh, you know, the, 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 the mean reverting things aren't going to be working as well. Um, but it's, it's important to understand the, 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 the proper weather for your strategy. Um, and if the weather is good for your, your is, if it's weather, weather appropriate for your strategy and it's not performing, then you have, there's a, there's a problem. Make sense? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Based on my experience, what's the most important characteristic of an optimal portfolio? Well, I mean, I think the most important characteristic is that it's performing well with very low drawdown. Um, it's, it's, I mean, I, I it basically, I don't, when we look at, when we put together a portfolio, we're, we're always looking for the most diversified possible basket of strategies um, and the most diversified basket of markets. So, for example, a portfolio that trades all the energy futures would not be considered to be a particularly well stra diversified strategy, but a, a five, a five market strategy, a five market portfolio that trades the stock index, a currency, um, a metal, a, a grain, um, and a, when they exotic like coffee or something, that has that has nice diversification. Uh, if you have, if you want to have five strategies for each market in your portfolio, um, but we have that more. Um, you'd want, you don't really want to have five with trend strategies. Um, unless somehow the with trend strategies are, are so different that they're really not terribly correlated. You really want to, like in, in Ranger, for example, we routinely look for, we call it a trio. We want a, a with trend, a counter trend, and a trend neutral. Um, and those are all, they're very different strategies from each other. Uh, and they don't have, they will, they'll have very low correlation to each. So the, the combination of those three will have a much lower drawdown than simply trading three a three lot on one strategy, which will simply triple your draw. You'll simply have three times the drawdown and three times the performance. So we're uh, the bottom line is um, performance and drawdown. Yeah, thank you. Um, has algorithmic trading should I tra trading over your career? Well, this is a this that's a funny question. Um, it's funny, it's not, not the question's not funny, it's just ironic because when I first started doing this back in the, in the 80s, you had to actually, you would not believe the arguments we would have, let's call them debates. People had to be convinced that it, we call them trading systems then, that a trading system even had a, had a chance of making any money. People did not believe that a trading system could actually produce profits. Um, they only believed that um, you know, we call discretionary trading now uh, would, could be profitable. So I think the first big and, and now the irony I, I find is that um, in some worlds, people don't really believe <laughs> that a discretionary trader can, can, can make any money and they only believe that algos can make money. Um, and the truth, of course, is, is, is in the middle of all that. Um, so that's one one big change has been that the world has it really embraced wholeheartedly um, algorithmic, alg algorithmic trading. Um, and that's been a very big change. Um, the, and that's, it's not a coincidence that it happened along with the rise of computing power. Um, the other thing that of course has really changed is that um, most amateur traders don't do this, but the high speed trading um, has really, really become a, a huge factor um, in trading, you know, largely. But the, I guess the good news is, is that even high frequency trading, as they call it, really um, kind of comes more into the area of what we call market making. Uh, you know, guys used to make a market on the floor in the pits um, and 
by holding really big inventory and being able to give people a, give people a trade on either side. Um, uh, but that's been taken over by um, high, a form of high frequency trading, which essentially is market making. Um, and that's that market making really um, it's a it's really a different way of trading and it has more to do with what they sometimes call market microstructure um, and more to do with gaming the system than it actually has to do with um, actually trading. Um, uh, it also has to do with the fact that, um, you know, in Chicago, I, I think there's a there's a lot there's a we, we have a lot of what we call proprietary trading firms. It's, it's actually a formal method of organization uh, that's that's that you have to that you have to practice. In a, you, you have to follow the guidelines that the exchange is set up. Um, but one really big advantage, of course, is, is that that people who are people who have do proprietary trading, they all have memberships, so they don't pay any exchange fees. So their commissions can literally be their commissions can literally be a couple of cents. Um, and sometimes sometimes now they're even giving people free commissions in some areas. Um, so that's and also with with the proud trading firms, they have um, they are able to use leverage in ways that the average individual can't. So you know, hedge funds all who trade stocks all use leverage because the hedge funds leverage stocks usually about ten to one, which is a, a, approximately similar to the to the leverage which is native to trading futures. Um, however, with a prop trading firm, you can actually you can add leverage on top of that. So not only do you have the leverage of the it's then it gets more like like in forex. Not only do you have the leverage of the ten to one say in, in futures, but if you're leveraging it four times, then you're actually leveraging forty times. You have forty times of the, uh, uh, on the asset value. So some of these things um, have really been the changes. Um, but the, the simple truth is. People like to think that there's um, people like to think because of computers and high frequency trading and because of artificial intelligence and so forth that um, the game has really changed and people can't really make any money anymore if they don't have all access to all these things. Well, that's just not true. Um, so th that's the good news. Um, and I actually have a presentation about this. Um, but the, go the good news is that um, markets still will have trends. As long as you have trends, you can make money. So it's just a matter of actually figuring out what it is you're doing um, and not trying to do something that actually is out, out of your reach. I mean, nobody you're not, you're not going to compete with the high frequency traders spend tons and tons of money on really, really, really fast computers. Um, and they spend a lot of money on, on their clearing costs and so forth. And they you're not going to you're not going to beat these guys. Unless you actually can outspend them um, and meet them at their own game, um, so you just don't you don't try. You just you have to do what what still works for you. Uh, and ultimately, if you can't come up with a strategy that works um, with within your risk guidelines, then I suppose you have to look to be doing something different. But ultimately, um, there have been a lot of changes, but the markets are still the markets. They still move. Some markets are hot. Some markets are not. Um, the, 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 those rules still are they're still in place and the, the AI has still not gotten anywhere near um, what it will eventually become and that's of course is a diff that's that's a di that'll be a different story when that actually comes into play but I personally feel that you know in in the end even though algo trading works extremely well um, and it's been the way I've made all the money that I've made in the markets have been has been that way um, a discretionary trader can still make money, but one of the things that will probably you'll see more and more of is you'll be seeing more and more. Um, shall we call? Let's, let's just call it for for want of a better word right now, robotic artificial intelligence support of of algo trading as well as of um, of discretionary trading. Um, and I think this is going to be. I don't. I honestly don't really believe that that's actually going to end opportunities for people. I think it's just going to make more opportunities. Because the simple truth is, with all of the with all of the electronic trading, what's really happened uh, is you have you have deeper markets, and you have more markets, 
Um, and with the if, as long as the world manages to, to hang together um, and continue to develop the way it is, um, we're going to have more and more markets to trade and more and more opportunities. Um, and I think it's just going to be a very, very nice time for all of us. If we yes, play the game yeah. correctly. Yes, it's uh, thank you for the uh, for the like very detailed answer. I think sure. it's uh, good news for for all the traders, retail traders, that there is still place for them in market, yes. and that they will not they will not be moved away by those guys with uh, um, like unlimited funds. And yeah, don't, uh, don't let it be dis don't be discouraged by it, because I actually yeah, yeah. did an interview with Andrew Swanscott about the AI trading. It's AI trading, AI and trading, and it's actually it's actually on YouTube. So if anybody's interested, they can go check on that as well. Yes, in strategy one, we are we are trying like like uh, uh, in balance, like using computer power, but but still be able to put your ideas in it. And sure. I think uh, when you find the balance and use the power to put the calculations and uh, the optimizations but you can set the process and you can put your idea in it then i think you can win very well i agree yeah you guys are doing a nice job with your stuff it's very nice thank you yeah i think we can move to the last question if it's is last. there one more oh yeah oh, oh sorry yeah. <laughs> sorry a long history of trading yeah that's for sure um i think the most i think I think a lot of people think with trading that all you have to do is get a strategy that works in your set. Um, trust me, that's not the way. It, that's not the way it works. Um, I think. I think I would say to, to anybody who really wants to make a living at trading, I think it's important for them to really understand exactly what what's required to do that. Number one, um, and number two, I think it's very important that people have honesty with themselves. If they can't really be, if they really can't put themselves um, in the seat of a trader um, and be comfortable with it, you probably are better off giving your money to somebody else to trade because you're probably not gonna do very well. Um, the, all the traders that I know who have been successful um, are very honest with themselves. Um, and they actually um, are, there are certain qualities that are important to being su successful in trading. And even when you're doing discretionary trading, you have this idea that the computer is pulling the trigger. Well, that's true if you let it. Uh, I can tell you, I can't tell you the number of stories I've had of customers of mine who have had great strategies who just refuse to take the signals um, and, and find all kinds of ways to mess mess with their strategy and screw things up. Um, so if you, it's, it's important to also know um, what it is you want from trading. Um, a lot of people, you know, I, I've seen when I used to be in brokerage many, many years ago, I, I saw a guy come in with $15,000 cash when that was more like $50,000. Um, and he actually he actually blew himself out in a matter of two days. Um, so, I mean, it's it's important to understand that trading is a business. Um, it has challenges. It's going to in all likelihood, I don't know that anybody's ever going to go through go through a trading for any length of time um, and not get whacked. Um, I mean, I remember years ago when I was when I was working when we we're running XT99 um, and the golf the first Gulf War went hot. Um, we were actually in that month we were up about 15 percent. Um, that day it went hot. We lost 11 percent. And I know my son was looking at me when I was looking at the computer screen. He said. He said, Dad, are you okay? And I, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Why? He said, because your, your face just went white. Um, all the color drained from it. So, you know, um, it's going to happen. And if you can't, if you can't live with, uh, you, you, you don't trade to be right. Uh, you don't trade for thrills. Um, you don't trade, uh, you don't trade to gamble. You trade to make money. Um, and it's a business. And you have to run it like a business. And you have to be able to be have the, the self integrity to know you can run it like a business. And then, of course, the next most important thing is you. If you have that, that's the most important. That's I think maybe the most important thing, um, because if you have that, you can also apply that to building strategies. Um, and 
you the, the other equally important thing then is to make sure you have strategies that are robust and then to make sure you have the strategies integrated into a portfolio that you can afford to trade um, and a portfolio that will be has, has enough money in it so you can withstand the drawdown and come back to keep on trading and these is this is what i would say to anybody it's um a lot of people think it's a very tough business most people who enter it like in most businesses don't succeed at it um and if you can't be devastatingly honest with yourself and if you can't be completely objective about your trading and about your about your your strategies and so forth you'll never make any money as a trader so this would, that would be my advice honesty and robustness thank you thank you very much you're welcome for uh, for uh, giving us your time and uh, sharing your experience i really appreciate it and, and uh, from my experience uh, many our customers from strategic one are asking those questions you know because it's always like they're create strategy and then strategy has drawdown and they need to deal it with it so i think they will uh, it will be really interesting for them to see uh, from uh, to see the all this problematic and this area from someone who has this long term experience and uh, and go through the numerous like uh, those crises drawdowns everything and finally survived and can give some truth and uh, some advices so Again, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. I hope it helps. And thank you for the opportunity. So I hope you found this lesson, this, this talk interesting, and that you will take away some interesting insights that will expand your knowledge. Because honestly, you don't come across an icon like this every day. And in conclusion, I would just like to remind you or rather mention a few things. Don't forget that the course ends next week. And if you want to send us your strategies, please do so until this midnight so that we have time and space to review the strategies before the final webinar where we will go over the strategies. And you can look forward to the last three webinars, which you won't want to miss because we saved the highlights for last. In the next lesson or webinar, you will see a brand new method of trading stocks that we haven't shown you yet. Again, it's a method that is proven, works very well and has great results. It just has one drawback. There is no platform through which to trade this method. There is no, no platform on the whole world. But we have decided to change that and we are preparing the platform for you. Well, in that webinar, we will show you both the method in our upcoming platform. The one I mentioned earlier, it was also possible to get access to beta testing of this app as part of Strategic One license purchase. And if you remember, those who decided quickly and bought the license with special bonuses got access to the beta testing for free, plus six months of the full version for free. And we've decided to offer you another, not the same, but very similar opportunity. So if you manage to buy a license within the discounted Black Friday pricing, you will get access to free beta testing and three months of the full version of the app for free as well. So at that webinar, we are going to show you the method, the whole platform, what we are going to expand it to and so on. In the next to last webinar, we will show you how to build your own business uh, on ATS because there's really still not a lot of quality strategies on the market, but a lot of people want to buy them. And we are going to show you how you can sell your own quality strategies and basically pay for your entire strategic one license and your training and education. And then we are going to have the very last webinar where we will look at your strategies that you're sending us and possibly other results. And that's it for today. Don't forget, you have the last few days to take advantage of Black Friday pricing on the Strategic One license and our courses on lab.sq.academy slash strategy lab. 
And if anything is unclear to you, feel free to contact us on our email or in the member section discussion forum. So thank you for your attention, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this webinar. Have a great day and see you next time.